Okay, let's uh. Okay, let's, uh, we're going to jump into uh, organic chemistry today, which is super fun. Um, finally, we made it through enough of a foundation that I think that if I talk about a tetrahedron, or I talk about trigonal planar, I talk about a carbon, I talk about electronegativity, hopefully those concepts are like, oh, okay, I kind of get that now. I'm understanding that. Because that lays the foundation on which organic chemistry begins to hopefully make sense and we build on it. It's going to be a super fun couple of weeks, all right? Might feel like you're drinking from the fire hose a little bit. That's good. This class is again like a 50,000 foot flyover. It takes a little bit of, not, or it takes a lot of topics and goes delves down into what I call principles of organic and biochemistry. Okay. Um, I was gonna do a exercise today for the general ed curriculum. Um, I'm gonna do, move that to online for Wednesday. So listen up. I'll, I'll send out an email to remind you if you're. I know a couple people are missing today. We won't meet face to face on Wednesday, okay? Uh, my boy's having his ACL repaired, so he goes into surgery, I think right at 11 o'clock, and so I'm gonna be there for him on that. So I'm gonna put a, a video or exercise somehow, I have to explain the scientific method to you. So it's gonna be one of those, watch a video of scientific method, take like a five point quiz, upload it, and I can check the box for, for that we went through the scientific method because that is one of the assessments that we're supposed to do in there, okay? Because this is considered a GE course. Okay, so we'll be done with that. So face-to-face -face on, uh, not face-to-face -face on Wednesday, then we'll pick right back up with organic chemistry, get into alkenes and alkynes and aromatics on Friday. Say it's super cool, all right? I'll give you exams back at the end, talk to you about that a little bit, and, um, and then we'll, we'll be good to go for um, Monday. Okay, so organic chemistry, here we go. We are going to talk about the nature of carbon and its relationship to carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Okay? Those three bonds that, that build the molecules of life, carbon, 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 nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, are key. So one of the first things that we're going to see is we're going to have multiple names for functional groups. Okay? Functional groups in organic chemistry is the combination What is the functional group, okay? You might have heard of an aldehyde. You might have heard of a ketone. You might have heard of it as a ketosis or some type of biological system. You might have heard of an alcohol. You might have even heard of an ether. Probably not a carboxylic acid or an amide, but these are all functional groups built by three atoms, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. So the flyover of our next few chapters looks like this. Carbon can come together with single bonds to carbon. We call these alkanes. Okay. Carbon can come together with carbon and have a double bond. We call these alkenes. Carbon can come together with another carbon in a triple bond. Well, we call these alkynes. Okay. What you do know so far is if two electron domains are, there's only two electron domains, the farthest that they can be off the central core is going to be linear. We know that. We had our Vesper. So this is going to have a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here, and I'm going to explain that here in a second. So alkynes have a linear geometry. This carbon has two hydrogens here and here, and a carbon that's three electron domains off a central core. So these are going to be trigonal planar. We'll talk about these on we'll talk about these on Friday. Alkanes 
have one, two, three hydrogens and a carbon, so they have four electron domains, so their geometry is tetrahedral. So we're gonna build today on understanding the alkane family. The rest of the chapter deals with the alkenes, the alkynes, and the aromatics. Aromatics are these really fun functional group that looks like this, okay? It's a six-membered ring with three double bonds in it. They're super amazing. It's the reason why DNA forms its, its helix. It's the reason why so many of the enzymes within our body have recognitions of things like tyrosine and phenylalanine. We're gonna build on that, all right? So these, this will probably be more like Monday's lecture. These will be Wednesday's lecture, okay? So we're gonna build on the concept of the alkane. Alkane has the tetrahedral, and that's why when we went through our geometries here, when we, when we looked at the, the tetrahedron, this is the carbon that we're talking about today, okay? So we're gonna be talking about the alkanes. The alkane family isn't super synthetically interesting. In the real world, all we do with alkanes is we burn them, for the most part. That's where you get propane, butane, hexane, heptane, octane. If you know what the octane rating is, the little yellow sticker on the gas pump even though it doesn't mean octane anymore. It used to back in the day, but not anymore. Okay, those are hydrocarbons that we burn. We add oxygen and heat to them, spark, they ignite, we get exothermic reaction, and we generate heat. So today, we're gonna to be talking about alkanes. How is this gonna build? Well, the how it's gonna build is carbon can also bond to a single carbon, okay? So if carbon bonds to a single carbon, or excuse me, to a single oxygen, this is called an alcohol. This is the next chapter. If carbon bonds to an oxygen that has bonded to another carbon, not a hydrogen, this is called an ether. Okay? And then from there, we have a new functional group that will be introduced, which is super cool, which is called the carbonyl. And carbonyl is a double bonded oxygen, whereas these are single bonded oxygens. So you can see how these functional groups are building. And if this carbon has a hydrogen on it, it's an aldehyde. If this carbon has another carbon on it, it's a ketone. Okay, and these are the functional groups by the end of the organic section. I want you to be able to identify, have some ba basic nomenclature of them, and know somewhat about some of their, their chemistry. Okay? So, and there's about Six more that I'm not gonna draw on the board today. We get, it deals with the nitrogen, because we're gonna add nitrogen to carbon. What happens when we add nitrogen? Well, we we'll get the amines and the amines and a couple other functional groups, okay? So you can see, organic chemistry really isn't that complex. It's the combination of three atoms. There's just a lot of ways to put them together, right? If I put two carbons together in a single bond, alkene, alkanes, two carbons in a double bond, alkenes, alkynes, carbonyl hydrogen, aldehyde, carbonyl carbon, ketone. You can see that again, carbon, oxygen, and then we'll get to nitrogen, and we'll, we'll be pretty much ready to move into carbohydrates and, and lipids and, and proteins and enzymes, and then ultimately the Krebs cycle, the citric acid cycle, okay? So let's go and let's start with carbon. Um, there is an error in your book that is probably important to correct at this point. Anybody bring your book today? Let me have a hard copy of it. Jack, do you have yours? I, this is an interesting, this is an interesting thing right there. But if you go to chapter 11, if you go to chapter 11, and you go to this table, this table here on page, 367, okay. 11.2 on 367 is wrong, all right? It needs to be moved, this, this line representation right here needs to be moved down one molecule, okay? So if you look at it, they have four lines for propane, there should be three lines for propane, all right? Just know what we're gonna do right now is this table, but this table is incorrect, okay? So either this section needs to move down one molecule or this needs to move, 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 move up one molecule, okay? So that's just kind of an annoying error in the book that hasn't been corrected yet. So carbon. Carbon 
in its ground state, it is 1s1, 1s2, 2p2. Okay? It's 1s1, 2s2, 2p2. The very first thing the carbon can do, because this is the n equals 2 principal quantum shell, is it can take these and mix them into three degenerate, meaning the same energy, or excuse me, four, and we called that sp3. Now you'll notice there was nothing on that on the exam, right? So guess what exam two is going to have? Some of this, because now I'm going to hold you accountable for it, because now it becomes important, all right? Because this is, the, this is what makes the difference between alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes in the end, that carbonyl and the aromatics. So this is where we have to understand what this means. SP3 comes from 1S and 3Ps, okay? SP3 carbon forms alkanes. Alkanes are SP3 carbons. Bless you. They can have four bonds shared. Our example of this was methane. So methane, now I'll write the name because now we're going to you know the names. Methane looks like that. Methane is carbon, one carbon with four hydrogens. It is an sp3 carbon, which makes it an alkane. Okay? Alkanes only have sp3 carbons. If I have an sp2 carbon, I'm no longer an alkane. I'm an alkene. All right? So alkanes only have sp3 carbons. So this is where shorthand of molecules is important in organic. Right now, we draw this and we say, okay, carbon wants, always wants four bonds. One, two, three, four, always. Carbon's one of the few that always wants, well, and nitrogen and oxygen. Okay, so, I wish that thing would go up. It's kind of annoying, but I'm just gonna have to do a lot of erasing today. I usually like to go all the way across when we don't have mask or recording, but we're just gonna live right here. Okay, are we tracking on, this is review. Okay, this is a nonpolar molecule because the little vectors, if you remember, 2.1, 2.5, we went through that. Now, if we count, if we count to 10 in organic chemistry, it's a little different than counting to 10 in our molecular nomenclature where we had tri or we had boron trihydride or dinitrogen pentoxide or whatever it was. Counting to one to 10 starts with meth, not math. And we'll see that's where the actual meth amphetamine gets its name from, okay? We have F, F. We have prop, we have bute, we have pent, now it's the same. We have hex, we have hept, we have oct, we have non or known, and we have dec. Okay, so at this point right here, it is the same from down, right? We talked about penta oxide or hex oxide or hept oxide. It's just those first four are a little bit different. Meth, F, pro, bute, okay? So you have to be able to count from one to 10. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, okay? That's not gonna change. That's gonna apply to alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, amines, and hydrides, whatever function group we're looking at, that's not gonna change, all right? What changes, is what I call this. What is my parent functional group? What is the functional group that has the highest priority? So right now we only know one functional group, and that's the alkanes that we're working with. So it's kind of nice. We just come in and since it's an alkane, 
we just use the ain ending. So this becomes f ain, f ain, prop ain, butane, pent ain, hex ain, hept ain, oct ain, no name, oh, but it has a name, dec ain. Okay? So you've heard some of those words. You've heard propane, probably heard butane, probably heard hexane. Hexane, if you've ever done any kind of backpacking or mountaineering or anything with that white gas, maybe like a Coleman stove or that you dump in, you pump it up, that's, that's um, hexane. It's a mixture of hexane and, and some, some branched heptates. It has a high, a lot of energy in, in, in those carbon-carbon bonds. So what do these molecules actually look like? How do we begin to build on this idea? Well, we already know what methane looks like. Methane simply, <coughs> methane simply looks like this. CH3, or excuse me, CH4. And that's how we abbreviate that. Carbon with four hydrogens. I know hydrogen's never a central atom, so I know that carbon is central, and carbon has four hydrogens sticking off of it. Ethane, so you can notice this. One carbon is meth. Two carbons is F. So the difference between methane and ethane is that this has this structure, okay? So watch this. It's two carbons. So I went from, I went from, lost the hydrogen. I lost the hydrogen. Okay, so this little guy here is methane, right? And you can see that methane is a tetrahedron, it's all, uh, this sp3 carbon each of these uh, gray lines represents two electrons okay that's a nonpolar molecule methane all right if i take and add one more carbon to this thing break a bond take this off you can see that once i have a carbon carbon bond notice i have two carbons two carbons is f f a okay because it's all Call it saturated, has all of its hydrogens, it's sp3 carbons, that makes ethane. Ethane is actually a really cool thing. If this were software level organic, we'd go into the rotation around this, the energy barrier, there's some really neat things to teach about this. Again, we're flying over. But ethane is a really important molecule, it looks like that. Now, there's a couple different ways to represent this. This is really important, stay with me. This is why I had to correct that table. I know that this carbon, if it's an alkane, has all of its hydrogens on it. I know that. It has to have four bonds. So that's why there's a couple different ways to describe this molecule on paper. One of them is to contract this down to what I did here and say that it's CH3, CH3. Does that make sense? It's a, it's a CH3 bonded to a CH3. That's what that's saying. Okay, so it's one way we can simplify than drawing all those sticks, all those hydrogens, all those carbons. But here's the thing. I know if there's two carbons and it's an sp3, I know it has, this carbon has three hydrogens on it. And I know this, this carbon has three hydrogens on it. So it's redundant to draw them in because I know they're there. So that's why we have this way of doing shorthand. And the shorthand looks like this, that's the same, this and this are the same thing. Because I know that this has three hydrogens and three hydrogens. So that's why it is that I can do this shorthanded, that is FA. Much easier. I would take this over this any day of the week. I know that each, end of a line is a carbon and on that carbon there are three hydrogens i know that so when we get to propane um i kind of did leave myself in the room i'm gonna i'm gonna zap since you have it on your notes i'm gonna zap propane propane then would be h c h h carbon h h c it's a little bit of a pain to do all that 
a little bit easier to go CH3, CH2, CH3, right? CH3, CH2, CH3, but it's way easier to do this. That's propane. Okay. Good. And again, I'll let you, if you want, fill in all this in your notes. I'm going to go straight to stick structure. Watch butane. Butane is going to be. Ugh. It's so cool. It's so much easier. Right? It takes may take a little time. So let's stop right there. Make sure we're tracking what I'm talking about here. Every terminus is a carbon. So it's like there's a carbon here. There's a carbon at every 120. There's a reason why I do 120. I'll explain that a little bit later. There's a carbon there. At this little thing, there's a carbon there. And there's a carbon here. I know that this is a terminal carbon, so that carbon has three hydrogens coming off of it. I know that this carbon has two carbons, so it has to have two hydrogens coming off of it. I know that this carbon has two carbons, so it has to have two hydrogens coming off of it to fill its four. It always has four. And I know that this carbon has three hydrogens coming off of it because it's a terminal. Does that make sense? And that's how the shorthand works. So that's why it is. And I'll go over here just like, man, I wish I could have that whole board. It's kind of a bummer. That's why it is. Again, when we draw the molecule, they, some of you might remember, we just went full shorthand with this molecule. And you can see, if I had to do the painstaking task of drawing every single carbon on this molecule and every single hydrogen, on this molecule, I would be drawing for quite a while. So I know that when I look at the morphine molecule, oh, hey, this is kind of interesting. That's the alkene that we're going to learn about. The rest of this is all alkane. It's all sp3 carbons. How many hydrogens are coming off that carbon? Two. Two. How many hydrogens are coming off that carbon? One. One. Good. You see how this works. How many hydrogens are coming off that carbon? How many on that carbon? One. How many on that carbon? Yeah, we'll, work. we'll work on that. That's an alkene. It already has one, two, three bonds. So how many does it need? One. So there's a hydrogen coming off that. All right? Isn't this easier than all of that? Now, I do know, I, I realize that this, this is a learned visual language, really. Okay, it's semiotics. It's, it's, it's information transferred through, through images. Just like the Nike swoosh and the Apple, um, the bit not Apple, all right? It might take a little bit of time to go from this to this, but again, eventually it will be there, okay? I'll try to help along the way, but we have to, as soon as we can lose the carbons and the hydrogens and start to see the organic molecule this way, it's gonna be easier for us, all right? So what am I gonna do with pentane? Well, once again, pentane looks like this. Kind of nice, okay? Hexane looks like this. Heptane looks like this. Octane looks like this. Nonane looks like this. And decane. Two, four, six, eight, ten, looks like that. Is that kind of fun? Okay. Now, any questions on that before we move on? Because we're going to build on this. Yes, sir. Is there a way to draw that? Yeah, it's, I, I, I've seen some people do this. I just hate it. Because is, is, is that a dot? Is that a period? Is that a blemish on the paper? Yeah. Right? So typically with methane, we do do CH4. And I'll just be honest with you. I've never seen ethane represented this other than in this textbook. So we really start shorthand organic with propane. So, and I'm, since your book has it, that's fine. But that's why your book's off, by the way. Because it leaves out the dot for methane, so it starts with ethane. So it puts methane as this. See how it's off one, it's off one carbon. 
So, okay. Any other questions? Okay, so follow along. Because this is a this is this is an important moment in our visual understanding of it. So I'm gonna start with I'm gonna build on butane. How many does butane have? Four. Four. Okay. I have butane. Let's 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 get rid of let's get we we're done here. Actually, get rid of that butane as well. Okay, so butane, butane looks like this, right? This is where we're at. Three hydrogens, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, three hydrogens. Carbon, 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 butane. So this is butane. Good. Okay, so that's butane. So butane has four carbons. Um, it has four carbons. So it is C4, right? H2468010, H10. Okay, so this is its molecular formula. molecular formula, C4H10, okay? So here's what happens with butane. Butane, I have it drawn on the board like that, right? See that? Okay, carbon, 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 which is why we do them in 120 degree angles, by the way, because it mimics what I have set up here. And roughly, it's, remember, it's 109.5. All right, so that's what I draw. But here's the thing. Alkanes, carbon to carbon sp3 bonds, have what we call free rotation. And in our body right now, our methyl groups are spinning away. Those are spinning. These are spinning at room temperature. These are spinning. Okay, these are spinning. So that means then I could also represent butane like this and it would be the exact same. That's exactly the same. I could represent it this way. I just flipped it upside down. I flipped it that way, or I flipped it that way. And you can see, it doesn't have to be drawn across the line like this. What I'm looking for are four carbons for this to be butane. Okay? One, two, three, four, butane. One, two, three, four, butane. One, two, three, four, butane. And you could keep going with this, right? You could even do it up that way. That's also one, two, three, four, butane, <clears throat> okay? So all of these are C4H10, 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 okay? But C4H10 has another form. We call that an isomer. So an isomer of butane C4H10 looks like this. If I take this molecule and I take that hydrogen or that bond off, I break that bond, and I put that on the central carbon, notice what I do have. I have something that looks a little bit different, but guess what? It's still C4, 1, 2, 3, 4, H, 3, 6, 9, 10. Still C4H10. So this is a different isomer from this one, still being C4H10. So isomers have different connections of their carbons, All right? So this is where we get into organic nomenclature. And I'm not going to take you into the depths of organic nomenclature, but we're going to learn the basics. Really fun. My concrete sequential learners love this because it's very systematic. My random abstract don't like it as much, okay? So that's just typically what happens with this, okay? So I know this is called butane. The question is, what is this called? They're both C4 
No, let's put that up top. They're both C4, H10. Okay. They're different. This molecule and this molecule are not the same. Therefore, they're going to be named different. Okay, so here we got a little few rules. Okay. All right, I don't, I don't want to stab at it because again, this is very systematic. It's very fun. Rule number one: find circle um, name longest chain. Rule number one. Engage with me today, because this, this is fun if you follow along what we're doing. It's not super complex, but it can be frustrating if you're going into your book and trying to pull this stuff out on your own. This is one place. General chemistry really is self-taught. Organic chemistry is co-taught. So we, we do. that's why I do enjoy teaching the organic chem. I, I like the G-chem too, but I really like this thing. Okay, so I'm going to find, I'm going to circle, I'm going to name my longest chain. That's rule number one. So what's my longest chain on this? Stay with me. What's my longest chain? I can go one, two, three. I can go one, two, three. I can go one, two, three. Looks like three is the longest chain I can find. What's the longest chain on this one? One, two, three, four. Okay? So one, two, three is my longest chain. So I'm gonna go ahead, I identified my longest chain. I'm gonna come in and I'm going to circle that thing. So I'm gonna put a blue circle around that. Okay, so rule number one says identify, circle, name the longest chain. So how many carbons are circled? How do I say three in alkane language? How? Propane. So propane. Okay, that's kind of cool. So it's propane. But I don't have something circled. I'm missing this carbon. So I have to figure out what I do with that carbon. Ah, rule number two. Circle, number, and list all branching. Okay. So, rule number two. And I'll do it, why don't I do this? Why don't I do this in blue? this in red. So this is blue. This is what the blue circle is. I'll do this in green just so that you can see where that rule comes from. So rule number two is circle and number. So I'm going to circle this as a branch. And now I have to number this thing. So the numbering process looks like this. I can either number the three carbons, one, two, three, or one, two, three. The caveat is I have to give the, the branching the lowest possible numbering. Okay, and I'll put that in bracket. Okay, so that's gonna really matter. I go one, two, three, or one, two, three. So I go one, two, three. Any questions so far? Good? Okay. The last part of this rule says, now go ahead and list it. So down here, I'm gonna say there is a two dash one carbon group. Well, how do I call, what do I call one carbon in organic chemistry? Well, I call it, but what do I call it from our list? Methane. So we lose the ain and we put ill. I heard it out there, but we lose the ill. So meth ain, which is what that would be if it were by itself, but because it's a branch, we lose that and we put an ill. So this becomes a two methyl. Okay? Again, yeah, we're gonna work on this. I, I realize this is all new, but that's cool. That's why we're going through it. Okay, and you might be asking yourself the question, which is a good question, what's up with the minus sign? So there's a little sub rule. 
we put a minus or a dash between numbers and letters. And the other subrule is we put a comma between numbers and numbers. Okay? Track it so far. So I have a two methyl branch, so it's a two dash methyl. Kind of cool. And the final, final rule is use alphabetical list name. Okay? Again, we're going to work on these. We'll have this. It's not that hard. Okay, so what that means is this becomes part of that. So my red pen becomes 2-methyl propane. How cool is that? So my longest organic compound here is propane. That's my blue. I found my numbering to give that group the lowest, the lowest number. So that is two. Either way, if I number it that way or that way, it doesn't matter. Okay. So then I said one carbon is named methane, but as a branch, it becomes ill. So it becomes a two dash methyl because I put a dash between numbers and letters. And then using the Germanic alphabet, 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 alphabetical, all of my branches are alphabetized. So there's only one branch, so the methyl goes out front. Questions? Because I'm going to do a couple of examples of this. We're going to work them together. Okay, so watch me do another one. I'm going to keep the rules up here. I'm going to lose these little guys. So watch. Let's go up. Let's go up a carbon. Okay, let's go up a carbon. Let's just build on this. Let's go up a carbon. Here is what molecule? What is it? Pentane. Good. So pentane. So pentane can look like this. It's going to be C five. H12. So pentane looks like that. And we would call this pentane. But there's an isomer of pentane that looks like this. Huh. That's not the same. Whoop, not that. Sorry about that. There's an isomer of pentane that looks like this. Okay? It's still C5H12, but it's not pentane anymore. Oh. What is it? Well, oh, good question. Let's go ahead and use our rules. Find the longest chain. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Which one's the longest? Four. Doesn't matter which one you circle. I'll just circle this one to be different. Because it does not matter which of the four you circle. At all. Okay, so I'm going to name my final name the longest chain. So what's my name for the longest chain? Butane, excellent. So there you go. So there's rule number one, done. Tracking? Rule number two, green. Circle all branching. All right, well, there's my branch. But I need to number it now to give that branch the lowest number. So I have two possibilities. I can go one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. Which one gives it the lowest numbering? The second one, right? So I'm going to go from right to left. So one, two, three, four. So it still becomes a two methyl with the dash. Are we tracking? Use the dramatic method, throw it all together. So it becomes two methyl butane. 
Kind of cool, right? Yeah, that's cool. Any questions on that? Because I'm going to complicate it. Good? Okay. So watch what happens. There's another, are we good here? Okay, there's another isomer of this thing, and it looks like this. That's also C5H12. So this was 2-methyl butane. What in the world is this thing? Huh? These are rules. Blue, I'm going to circle the longest chain. I'll just leave it in the plane just for fun. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and name that. I'm going to do it over here so I'm running out of room down here. That's propane. I'm going to jump down to the second rule and notice what I have. I have a branch here and I have a branch here. Well, that's kind of interesting. I have two of these things. But I still need to number them before I list it. So this is going to be one, two, three. So I'm going to make my list. What do I have here? Methyl. Yeah, what, what, what methyl? Two dash methyl. Okay, good. So two methyl. And what do I have here? I have a two methyl. Oh, I got two of them. Okay, well, sorry. So that sounds kind of redundant. Two methyl, two methyl. So we contract it, just like we do when we're using the English language. We don't say it is, we say it's. So this contracts to two comma two di methyl. Now, Here's where we do come back into the old way of naming molecular compounds, which was mono, di, tri, tetra, pentahexa, hepta, octa, nona, deca. So since I have two of these, I don't call them F, I call them di, just like mono, di, tri, tetra. And then after penta, it becomes the same, penta, octa, hexa, okay? You might be wondering, the comma. What's the comma for? Separating numbers from numbers. Otherwise, it would be 22. That makes no sense. I don't have 22 carbons on here. So I call it 2 comma 2 dash di methyl. Now go ahead and do the whole dramatic thing and notice what this molecule becomes. It becomes 2 comma 2 di methyl propane. Isn't that fun? Yeah. How come this out here, alphabetically? Uh, just the number in general out front. It's just, it's just convention. This is going to get really complex. Because this from here to here, from here to here is called the prefix. This is called the infix. And this is called the suffix. And when we get to ketones and other things, we're going to put hyphens in here and start to stretch this out. I mean, it just gets monstrously complex. But this isn't a course in nomenclature, so thankfully we're not going to go into the weeds on this. But we do have a basic understanding of how when you see a word, thankfully they call some of these like just normal things like morphine. <laughs> not its actual scientific name, which would be like a bicyclo. Yeah, anyway. Okay, so practice. Okay, your turn. See one, do one, teach one, right? Okay, your turn. Name. Name this molecule. Okay. Go for it. You can do it.
Okay, one more time. Let me do it. Can we do it? We're good? Okay, let's give it a shot. Rule number one. Identify, circle, name the longest chain. So sometimes you just have to hunt and pack and look around. All right, so I've got one here. One, two, three, four. Okay, I've got one here. One, two, three, four, five. I've got one here. One, two, three, four, five. Huh, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Or one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six about as long as one I can find. Are we all tracking with that? Doesn't matter which one you circle. I'll circle the obvious one. I'll just circle that. So I, num I name all of those. I get them all out of the way by one name, and what is it? Hexane. Boom. So this is hexane. But it's a specific hexane, right? So now I have to go down to rule number two and say, oh, this thing has some branches I need to deal with. So I've got a branch here, and I've got a branch here, right? Good? And I have to say, okay, I have to give the first branch the lowest number. So I have a one, two, or I have a one, two, three. Which gives that the lowest number? Two is lower than three. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And six should confirm my hexane. All right, so now I'm going to list those. I've got a two methyl, and I've got a four methyl. I contract those down to two comma four dimethyl, and I go Germanic on it. Two, four, dimethyl, hexane. How many got it? Boom, let's go. One more, last one. One more, I wanted to do one more. We have three minutes. You can come up with your exams. Hang on. Okay. Watch what happens when we do this. Okay. Watch what happens. This is, this, is, this, this is an important difference now. So I'm still going to circle my blue. Longest. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Doesn't matter. I'm just going to circle the obvious one. So six again is hexane. Now I need to number my branches, giving the first branch the lowest numbering. So I have a one, two, or a one, two, three. So the two wins out. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now when I list them at two, I have a methyl. But at four, what do I have? Ethyl. I have an ethyl. Excellent. Okay. So, so now the Germanic does what to me? It tells me I have to alphabetize it. What comes first, the E or the M? E. e. So this is four ethyl dash to dash methyl. Dashes always separate hexane. Cool. And methyl hexane is always one word? It is, okay. for now. Gotcha. Yeah, if it's, if it's hexanone, there'll be a number in there. Okay. So for now, it's the same. Okay. Yeah, we're building. Questions? Again, it's very systematic. You just kind of have to work through it a little bit. So here's what we're going to do on Friday. We're going to complicate it. We're going to add halogens and we're going to make rings. And then we're going to jump into alkenes. We're jumping out time. It's going to be fun. I love it. Okay. Um, here's the deal. Listen up. Listen up. up, 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 up. Um, a couple people did not turn their actual exam in for me, so these are just kind of floating by themselves. The rest of them are here. Um, exam scores are about what I expect for first exam. What I'm going to allow you to do, listen up. If you do it wrong, I might not give you points. I'm going to give you a chance to correct it and get, get half credit back, which will help some of you out a lot. Okay, we had some really high scores in here. So I think the high was 96 or 98. So, so I typically curve the exam at the end of the day. For now, I'm going to hold off on that because that, that's a little different if I give corrections back. 
Here's what I want from you. I do not want these exams back. I don't even want the Scantron back. I don't want you to go on here and circle the correct answer even. I want a separate sheet of paper with your name on it, the ones you missed written out and why it was wrong and what the correct answer was or whatever you need to do to correct it. I want a single piece of paper or whatever. I guess it could be multiple, you had a lot of them. But I want, I want a single sheet. I don't want these back, okay? So don't staple it to it. Don't give me the Scantron. Don't give me anything. Just give me that single sheet of paper, okay? Because I will lose it. <laughs> if you give it back to me, it's gone. Yes? When do you want those back? I want those back on Friday. Okay? I won't be here on Wednesday, so good, good, good. Yeah, Friday. Good? I think that's fair. That way you can go back and kind of see the mistakes you made, hopefully build upon those mistakes. All right, so come on up. Here, I'll just tip them upside down. Going anonymous, but anonymity. <laughs> <laughs> 